Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamertguru.com. Today I'll be creating isometric waves in Inkscape. Inkscape offers a nice isometric grid that you can set up in the document properties. Let's move it to the center. In the grids tab, you have two options, the rectangular and the axonometric grid. In this case, we choose an axonometric grid. I took the default one and just increased the spacing, seeing its vectors. You can scale things afterwards. I just wanted something that's big enough to be visible. And I changed the document background, which by default is set to white to a dark gray to allow me to see the white highlights we're gonna add to the foam on the waves afterwards. So let's close that one. Make sure your grid is visible. It's in view page grid. I prepared a base ESO tile, which was created using the straight line tool. You can see if I draw the lines now and move close to the grid, the nodes snap right away. So I get base ESO tiles, in this case, the pink one with the black outline. We wanna work without outlines for this one. So I'll delete this and make a duplicate of it. Give it a lighter color so we can see what we're doing and take the front or the left two nodes and move them up. Duplicate the whole thing again, make it darker and take the two right nodes and move them down to create a tilted ESO tile. This is supposed to be the breaking part of the wave. So I select all four nodes and curve those. You can see the handles for the curvature also get snapped to the grid. So I can hopefully recreate same here. So I have a curved shape. I can do the same with the top, give it a slight curvature to look a little more dynamic, a little rise here and a bit lower there. Let's keep those. By using the grid for the handles as well, I can make sure that this tile, when you put the next one to it, will match perfectly so that the curve of the top as well as the bottom match. I have created a blue version before. So here we have the light coming from the top. So let's make the top the lightest. This will be the break. And this dark part is basically our base tile, which will be hidden by the next tile sitting over here. So we won't be seeing that at all. So at the moment we just care about these two. And in order to make it look a little nicer, we go with the gradient, put a gradient in here that goes to a lighter watercolor, move it up a bit and do the same thing at the top. Put the gradient in that goes to some darker color. Now it's reversed. Let's pick one that I've already created. It needs to go from darker on that side to lighter at the top of the wave. Now this one needs to be adjusted in a way that the gradient matches our base angle of 30 degrees. So just fiddle with that a little bit in order to keep the tiles seamless afterwards. 
So I have my base wave shape. We won't bother with the base tile underneath. On top of the wave, I'll put a small line of foam where the wave breaks slightly. In order to do that, I create simple shape in come on in a light blue and I remove the stroke no stroke here picking the color of the lightest one and maybe going a little lighter still a lot lighter okay looks a little boring so we'll add some notes here select that one and add a few notes turn all of them into curves and we can move oh, deleted that one move them helps to turn the snapping off completely here so we can just freely move them without those getting attracted to the ones next to them A little bit more motion would be nice. So let's add a circle down here, which will set to a lower opacity to make it shine through. Turn the object to a pass so we can give it the same curve we have for the wave here. Maybe at the top, let's make it Narrow, okay. Duplicate that one. So, <clears throat> scaling it slightly. Taking the bigger one. Just for variation. So it looks more interesting. Move those along. And add a few highlights on top. Okay, we can go lighter there, make them completely white. Add a few more. You know I love going simple and circles and square are the simplest shapes, but for what we want to create some sort of foam shape, some noise that will distract from the straight lines those circles work fine adding a few more down here scaling them variation with everything is the key to make them look less repetitive afterwards and finally we add some completely white highlights to the top. So let's make an oval completely white. And this one will be placed to cover up the break line between the curve and the firm of the front. Another duplicate of that, slightly smaller. and top it off some more small circles for the foam. Zoomed out, you can see that the circles blend into one foam line at the top. The key now is to add variation, change the curvature, change that lib at the edge, make it bigger for a wave that is actually breaking. Yeah. Three different shapes, that's the one we've been working on. One that is lower and one that's actually breaking. You can see there's more curve in the top part, plus a bigger lip element and more dots for the foam. 
Play around with the color, the curve, the length of the lip, the amount of foam you want to add to create your own isometric waves that work for your game. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I had great fun recording it. Leave a note, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment on my blog, let me know what you think. It means a lot to me.